First thing, uh, we're gonna set the uh, parking brake and put the car in neutral. And then turn off the car. Next step, let's uh, remove the sh shifter. So pull this down so you can access the clip here. Go ahead and remove the clip. And then lift the shift knob up. Go ahead and put the clip back on the shifter so you can um, just put it back on when you're done with it. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two side panels. So go ahead and pull out. They pull out like in this direction. So go ahead and pry these open like that. This is what it looks like. So set that aside. And we'll remove the other side as well. Open like that. And that's it. One. Next step, we're gonna remove this panel right here. Lift up from here. Then remove it from here. That's it. Next step, we'll remove these two screws right here so we can lift up the shifter panel right here. That's one. That's two. Then we can go ahead and lift this panel up. There's going to be some connectors underneath it that we'll need to uh, disconnect. Let me try to show you. Here is the first one. Let's go ahead and disconnect this guy. There's going to be... Let me try to lift it up further. I really can't. There's going to be another one right here. Go ahead and disconnect this guy as well. Two. And then we have two more. One right here. And then one more right here. Next, we're going to remove the two air vent panels. Start from the bottom and work your way up. One. And that's two. Next thing, we're going to remove this uh, second monitor panel. So remove these two screws right here, and then you'll be able to pull it out. Pull it out from here. There's also three additional clips up here. So just pull it forward. And then you'll have access to the back here. There's one, two, three cables to this connect. Go ahead and undo those connections. One, two, and three. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the top screen right here. So go ahead and undo these two uh, screws. Then you can lift, pull this 
this monitor out. And then behind here, I don't know if you can see, we have several connectors back here. So we'll need to go ahead and undo those. We have one. This one right here, two, and then we have one, two, three. One, two, three. You might have more connections down here based on the options in the car, but again, just uh, keep note of how many connectors you remove so you can go ahead and connect those back onto the screen once we're done with the installation. Next, I'm gonna remove these four screws so we can pull the radio unit forward. Again, there's no need to disconnect all of the cables back here. No need to do that because the only cable that we'll work with is uh, this guy right here. So when we get to it, I'll show you exactly which cable we're working with. But for, the, for now, just go ahead and uh, rest this radio unit right here. Okay, we're gonna install our subboard inside of the LCD screen. Uh, for the 2017 QX60. So let's begin by putting a protective uh, sheet over the LCD screen itself, just to protect it. And once that part is done, we'll go ahead and remove this bracket right here. Three, four, now the bracket can come off. There's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen screws that we'll need to remove. Bracket piece comes off. That's fine.
go ahead and remove these four last ones. And then when you're pulling out this screen, be careful. The uh, fan is connected right here. So what you're gonna do is pull from this side out to this, to the right, like that, gently. And then go ahead and disconnect the fan. And then you can go ahead and set this aside. There's gonna be three rearing cables, one, two, and three that we'll need to remove. So just go ahead and gently pop open the tab. One. Two. And three. One screw in the middle. And then uh, this is the uh, Bluetooth uh, antenna. You can, if you'd like, you can go ahead and disconnect it, but uh, it's easier if you just pull it out and set it like this. But for today, uh, since I'm showing you how to do this, I'm going to disconnect it so I can uh, easily work with the bottom screen. So here it is disconnected. Put this aside. All right. So we're ready, we're ready with the uh, subboard installation. Go ahead and um, put the plastic cover on first. With your subboard, I typically like to make these three connections first, and then this one right here. So we'll grab this uh, LVDS cable, LVDS, it goes in here. Next, the sub data cable. This one, you can fold it up like that, just to make it easier for you to insert. and then make sure it's inserted all the way. You don't want to leave a gap. And this one goes right here. Be careful with this one and the LVDS. They're the same there's they're the same three pin connector type, but again, LVDS is labeled. It goes here and then this one goes there. Put these cables aside. Next, we'll install this ribbon cable right here. Let's just go ahead and pop that open like that. Make use of the plastic edge, blue side up, to help you push in. You'll hear it click once it's in properly. Put the clip down. And this is how it should look like. It should always line up with the blue lines, with the with the uh, black dotted line. Let me make sure I have this in correctly. If you're not sure, go ahead and pull it out and reinsert just to make sure you have it this in correctly. That's it. This is what it should look like. Next, um, we'll connect this ribbon cable to this port right here. So go ahead and open the tab. And once it's open, I'll zoom in. Once this tab is here is opened up, go ahead and insert this in. And again, you kind of will hear it when it clicks in. Push this down. And this is what this should look like. That's how much it should come out. And then once you have that, go ahead and, and 
route this rearing cable in through here. You can start to settle this down. And then this ribbon cable will go into this, this slot right here. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. Close. And see mine isn't lined up correctly. This is not a good connection. So you just want to make sure it's lined up properly like that. So now that that's done. So here are some pictures of what not to do when you're installing the ribbon cables. As you look at this ribbon cable here, even though the line looks pretty straight, um, if you pay close attention to it, the line is not uh, exactly straight as we can say. Whenever you're doing these things, make sure that you're pushing in the ribbon cable all the way inside the clip and make sure that the white line is uh, straight with the with the black clip on there. Um, even though sometimes they look straight, it's always good to take a good look at them. Um, make sure you try to put them as straight as possible, um, because these things are it's really it's really sensitive when you when you're installing these things. They have to be perfectly uh, installed. So here's a, a good example of what I'm talking about. Uh, the left side is probably a little bit lower than the right side, and I believe also that uh, well this ribbon cable is not pushed in all the way in. So this is improper install. Uh, you will have issues when you're whenever you do something like this. Um, here's another example. This was a little bit more obvious. As you can see that the line is not straight at all. The ribbon cable is not pushed in all the way in there. Um, this will not work. So then let us look at another example of what not to do. Uh, if you look at this blue ribbon cable, it's not pushed in all the way in there. You can see that giant gap between the clip and the black line on the blue ribbon cable. Um, this one needs to be pushed in in more uh, deep inside. And also, you, again, line up the black line with the clip. Make sure everything is lined up perfectly well. If it's just off a little bit, you're going to have issues. Typically, one of the biggest uh, uh, giveaways that um, allows you to know that you install this ribbon cable incorrectly is whenever you have lines going through your screen. Uh, you will have a white screen with pink or blue purple lines going down through the through the screen. Um, if you do get that, it's because you didn't install the ribbon cable correctly. Let us look at another image here. As you can see here, another giant gap between the black line and the and the uh, clip itself. I drew uh, arrows in the middle to show you the gap. Uh, again, even though the line looks straight, this is not properly installed. You want to push that ribbon cable all the way down and then close it. After you close it, check your, um, your how can I say, the integrity of how straight the ribbon cable is. Uh, this is just a uh, quick example for you guys to see what not to do. So now I'm showing some video of what a properly installed ribbon cable, cable looks like. You can see here that the lines are perfectly well aligned with the black clip. Uh, that's exactly how you want it done. It's the, the ribbon cable doesn't look damaged at all. It's, it's how can I say this? It's clean. It's a clean install. Um, there's nothing wrong with this uh, install. Uh, let us look at uh, another example of what a properly installed ribbon cable looks like. As you look at this one, this ribbon cable here is nicely install nicely pu uh, put into the 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 clip um there's no um how can i say this there's no gaps or anything like that it's pushed on all the way in there uh, let us look at another example if there's another one here here you can see this blue ribbon cable as well uh, this is what a properly installed ribbon cable looks like as well um the reason why i'm showing these videos because um people are having a hard time installing these things Again, whenever you're doing these things, you want them to be perfectly uh, installed. If it's just uh, off a little bit, you're going to have issues. So please use these pictures as references and try to install them exactly the same way that you see them here. Let's go ahead and put in the plastic rivets. These guys.
separate them, make it easier. Put in the bottom piece first. One. Two. Three. And top piece. Secure it down. And now that that's in, let's go ahead and put that ribbon cable in here. Again, blue side up. Close that down. That's what it should look like. Alright, now that those are in, this part is done, let's go ahead and put this back on. So again, if you would have never disconnected the Bluetooth, then you would just bring it over this way. Put it into place. Make sure this ribbon cable comes out like that. Perfect. And then you can go ahead and start making your connections. I'll do the Bluetooth first so I don't forget it. And then make sure it's routed in like that. Next is this ribbon cable right here. If you want, you can go ahead and secure the board with that screw that goes in the middle. Go ahead and connect this ribbon cable right here. Make sure it lines up. This one right here, I'll zoom in for you guys. This one pull up and this one insert it and then push down on the ribbon cable you hear it go in or you'll feel it go in and then push this down and it should line up exactly like that and then for this one same thing you'll feel it go in that push down and that's how it should look like all right um this rearing cable i mean this cable right here will be routed like that so go ahead and fold it here And then fold it here too. So that way when you put the board back on, it'll end up like that. And then these two are going to sit here. Be careful it doesn't get um, squished by the top plate, the back plate. It'll just uh, lay like this on top of that. I'll show you. In a little bit so we got the uh, Bluetooth antenna reconnected one two and three rearing cables connected these are properly connected so we can go ahead and put that back plate back on connect the fan
go ahead and bring it over. Again, align this cable right here so it doesn't get uh, squished by the back plate. And then before you really uh, press it in firmly, take a look here. See how it's being squished right there? You don't want that. Bring these two cables over to the top part. And then this guy will sit here. And as you're doing that, go ahead and close it. And once it's closed, you want to make sure you can tug on this uh, on these two cables right here because again if you can't tug on it it means it's probably resting it's probably being uh, squished in there or somewhere else so be, be very careful with that this will end up like that this rearing cable is already in place where I mean this uh, cable right here is already in place where we want it to be let me go ahead and zoom out so let's go ahead and um, Go ahead and put some screws on. Just keep in mind, I do have this on the lowest setting, so it's not over tightening it. careful with that all right now let's show this part right here this is how the cables are gonna end up so go ahead and grab one of those side brackets start putting it into place And um, just go ahead and uh, start putting in some of the screws. So put it in all the way so that way all of them can go in properly. Again, you want to make sure this you can move in and out and these will just sit tightly right here so that's fine there's enough clearance for them to come out of here go ahead and wrap things up finish putting in the rest of the screws back on let's go put this plate back on just these little tabs go on the top and then the screws the holes for the screws are right here they go on the bottom let's go ahead and position this into place Screws on the side.
this should be your final result. Cables come out of this side. So all screws are back in. You can connect these guys. All of the other screws are in. Okay, let's go back in the car and finish the installation. Let's go ahead and begin uh, connecting uh, some of the components that we uh, need to install here. I'll start with the external speaker. External speaker, I'm able to just place it in here. And then route this cable down. Just see the cable there. Next, I'll connect the uh, DCU main cable. Go ahead and separate this part right here. I'll go ahead and route it behind this. Come out like that. Then connect, connect it here. Of the two white ports you connect it to this one the two white connectors here connect to here and then um, uh, apply a piece of uh, foam tape to it so it doesn't pick up on any background noise Next is the CarPlay mic cable. Go ahead and connect this guy right here. Use foam tape. Next up is the screen. Go ahead and uh, route these two cables down first that are coming out of the screen. And then get the screen in position. And then go ahead and uh, reconnect the original connectors to the monitor. We had blue, we had black, we have green. Have the CarPlay mic cable, and the DCU part cable, and you go ahead and position the screen back into place. secure that. 
Next we'll install the iPod cable, iPod harness. This is the only one that connects to the back side of the radio. So go ahead and set these cables aside. Pull out the radio here so we can check it. Um, to help you, go ahead and disconnect this harness right here. It's uh, the only OEM harness I would just disconnect for now to help us access the cable below it. This cable right here, go ahead and disconnect it. This is where you would connect the iPod harness to. So grab the iPod harness, connect this guy right here. Definitely add foam tape around that connection. that and then this end connects back into here and don't forget about this connector over here in mind uh, another reason why I say not to disconnect all of the cables is because some of these cables are the same so be careful with that this one fits in here but again it shouldn't go here this is specific for this module so be careful with that now that's why again I recommend don't disconnect all of it just disconnect the ones that you're working with Next, uh, let's connect a key cable right here. Key cable will plug into this guy right here. This is one of the three connectors that connect to the back side of the monitor. And then you have the three pin coming off of the key cable. That will connect to this connector right here. It's labeled key. This cable right here is coming off of the main DCU cable that you connect to the back side of the monitor. So go ahead and connect this cable right here. And then uh, use foam tape, uh, apply foam tape to these connectors right here. Next we're gonna install the CarPlay USB cable. Uh, so go ahead and connect the speaker end of it to that external speaker that we installed behind the monitor. Here's its cable. Go ahead and connect these two. And maybe apply a piece of foam tape I'll do it later in terms of the USB uh, portion of it uh, depending on your customers preference uh, you can have this USB installed uh, and you can have it come out out of here if you'd like so you would have to route it down and have it come out through here if there's a way for you to put it in the glove box compartment even more props to you in our particular scenario, I'm going to route this cable down underneath here and have it come out through here because we are going to install an optional USB mount inside of the glove box compartment. But um, this is going to be our method for today. But um, as an installer, you can choose where you want to install this. This needs to be accessible to the customer so they can connect for wired CarPlay and or auto connection. Next, you're gonna want to pull out the carpet here. Our CarPlay module is gonna go behind this carpet in this area right here. So go ahead and remove this guy right here. It's just a clip like that. And remove that guy over there. It's a screw you can undo. Now that that's off, go ahead and pull the carpet from this corner right here out towards you. So you can place a CarPlay module right here in this area.
and you're gonna have the cables come out through here when we route them through. Go ahead and take all your cables. All of these cables will need to route down into this area and come out through here like I showed you in the video before. So you can do them one by one, uh, feed them through. Uh, today I'm just gonna try uh, taping them all together. So I'll demonstrate that process. But again, the method on how you do it is up to you. Go ahead and feed it down. these cables to come through like that. And just put them all the way through so that way you have enough room to work with these cables. Next, we'll work with the CarPlay module. Uh, we'll connect these cables to the connectors right here. I'm just gonna quickly prepare it. I usually like to add foam tape to it. of foam tape to protect that guy. Like that. And then let's go ahead and begin with these connectors right here. I'll connect the uh, mic cable. First right here. 
I mentioned earlier about the iNob. If you have the iNob, connect it here. Otherwise, if you don't have the iNob that the customer purchased, which is optional, don't, don't worry about this port right there. Next is this guy. This is a CarPlay USB cable. Next is this guy. This is the iPod cable. Next is the UART cable. And six pin power cable. Whoops, that's not it. Power. Now that you have these cables in here, let's connect these guys up here. LVDS. Sub data cable. And the main trip cable. That's it. Go ahead and um, Organize these cables um, so that way uh, they're not in the way. I'm just going to twist them for now. And then you're going to position this module inside right here. Put these cables down so they're not out of so they're out of the way. If you have to. Um, uh, I recommend putting these cables before you connect everything, route them through behind this bracket just to keep it organized behind there. But this is okay as well. That's where the CarPlay module is going to go. CarPlay module is going to rest right here. Go ahead and put the car position the carpet back into place. that and then you can go ahead and put the screws back on this part is optional again if we're installing the optional uh, USB extension conversion cable then go ahead and proceed with this part uh, so let's go ahead and get this ready Here, go ahead and put this on it. Like that. So let's go ahead and remove this piece right here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it first, and then this piece will have to come out. Can't do it with your fingers and use a prying tool of some sort to help you take it out. that removed you may uh, you may need to make this hole just a little bit bigger so go ahead and use a drill a drill bit like this one um, you can make the hole bigger Don't make 
make it too big because otherwise it's going to be too loose. I'm going to go ahead and test it. Keep this through with that. Try not to force it in because uh, the uh, this can get ruined right here. And go ahead and use this to secure it. ends together and tape that up. What you can do with the tape is do it in such a manner where it holds the two cables together. Go ahead and also uh, tape up this connector right here, since we're not, it's not going to be used anymore. Apply a piece of foam tape just to protect, insulate that connection right there. And tape up any excess cable. Uh, everything now is connected let's go ahead and reassemble everything uh, let's get this here out of the way position the eye knob in here
both of those guys are in. Let's go ahead and put this guy back on. I'll remove this now. So let's make the connections here. Again, depending on whether you had the key cable or the iNob, key cable or iNob cable will connect to this port right here. Let me connect this guy first. This guy second. Again, either key cable or the iNob will connect here. Keep in mind these guys will just go in like that. Then you can position this back in. Two screws right there. Next is the shifter panel. Go ahead and redo these connections right here. We got that one. We got this one. And we have two more down here. Two screws here. One. And two. Install that panel right here. Cup holder panel. Remember, it's got a little hook tool right here, so make sure it goes in in there first. And you can secure it down. Side panels, one. And then finally, shift now. And you're ready to test. All right, now that the installation's finished, uh, let's go ahead and test a couple of things, a few things before we deliver the uh, the vehicle to the customer. So I'm gonna test today with an iPhone. Go ahead and grab your uh, USB cable. For iPhones, I recommend that you use a lightning cable. Otherwise, there might not be a good connection. So go ahead and connect your cable to the CarPlay USB port. If you have the optional USB extension cable, we have it installed here. Otherwise, uh, you may have your USB cable coming out through this area right here, which is perfectly fine. Again, it must be accessible to the customer. So go ahead and connect your phone uh, to the cable. You'll see that it charges. You'll see that the screen changes and CarPlay will load. You hear that music, that music is coming through through the external speaker. 
Uh, so if you want the music to play through the car uh, speakers, then we'll need to go into audio, source, and iPod. And now the sound is playing through the car speaker. So uh, um, again, just leave it in an iPod. Uh, you can still go to FM, AM, and all the other radio stations. That's still operable. Our system doesn't affect this. But uh, if you want to listen to CarPlay audio through the car speakers, you must be an iPod. So let's go ahead and test it. Uh, again, you can use a touchscreen to control the CarPlay. And you can just control it through there. That's no problem. Uh, in order to switch to the original side, press and hold the back button right here. Press and hold for three seconds, and it will switch. Press and hold for three seconds, and it will switch again. So those are two ways that you can switch back and forth. Uh, that's a one way you can switch back and forth, I'm sorry. This is a second way you can do that as well. Press it, just press it once, and the screen will switch. Press it once again, and the screen switches. Uh, let's test out the reverse camera. Perfect. Uh, let's test Siri. You can press and hold this one right here. Hey Siri, take me to the nearest gas station. Never mind. Hey Siri, take me to the nearest gas station. My internet's weird. All right, there you go. Uh, so that's it for that. Uh, let's also test out phone calls. Uh, so um, let's go into um, menu, settings, Bluetooth, Connect device, add a new device, and then I'll go to my settings and add this car. I forgot to mention, I never unlocked my phone, but when you do unlock your phone, there's gonna be two questions that show up. Do you wanna allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Customer has to answer this, you can answer it. It's up to you, I just press allow. The second question is, do you wanna enable CarPlay with wireless CarPlay? So here is where the customer can choose whether they want to use CarPlay wirelessly or use USB only. Um, I recommend that the primary driver use wireless CarPlay and then for all other people in the car, let them connect with the USB cable so that way the phones aren't competing for wireless connection. So I'm testing today, I'll, I'll reset everything so I'm gonna reset the, I'm gonna enable wireless uh, just to test it out. In the, mean, in the meanwhile, let's go ahead and test the, those phone calls. Again, when you're doing wireless, leave your phone connected for about two to three minutes so that the wireless setup can complete. Go into Bluetooth, look for my car. This one's from an old car. Just wait for it to show up. You may need to uh, turn off Bluetooth, turn it back on again. There it is. Sure. All right, cool. So again, we connect, we're connecting to the Bluetooth for testing of the phone calls. So to make calls, I use Siri. Hey Siri, call 714-258-0400. And you'll find that that automatically routes it through the, uh, the Infinity's Bluetooth. So that's what you want. That's why we're doing it this way. You want it to automatically use the Bluetooth option. Hey, can you do me a quick favor? Can you call me back, please? Thank you. Oops, I hung up on it. Uh, and then when you're receiving a call, 
uh, answer with the answer button over here. So we're getting that call. I'm gonna go ahead and answer here. And then if it switches, again, press and hold this button to change back or this button. Uh, all right, that's it, thank you. All right, bye. So again, make calls using Siri, activate Siri through here. And then to answer a call, answer it through here so that it forces it through the uh, Infinity's Bluetooth. Let's test out the wireless connection. Go ahead and disconnect your phone. And if the wireless setup is complete, the CarPlay logo will show up up there. And now we have a wireless connection. All right. Uh, we're done testing this car. Uh, go ahead and uh, reset the connections. So we'll go into the menu, Infinity, Settings, Information, and then Reset. Press OK. And then on your phone, go to Settings. Like that. We'll go into Settings, General, CarPlay, it's gonna be the CarPlay right here, and then forget this car. So now um, your phone has forgotten about the CarPlay module and the CarPlay module has forgotten about all connections. So now you're free to have the customer connect their phone.